All right, let's talk about verbal communication in New Zealand and can we improve it? So there's a lot to say on this particular one because it's quite big. You have the slang terms, you have the accent, you have cultural norms. Uh, different cultures here, you know, communicate differently. Certain um, jargon is appropriate. Uh, and, and so it, it really can be quite confusing when you come here and you're like, okay, is this like, okay, and like, and even just how you're taught to communicate doesn't necessarily come across very well either. As you know, Americans are loud and aggressive is kind of the typical um, stereotype. Uh, and it's okay, it's true. Uh, and so, yeah, so let's talk about verbal communication. So in New Zealand, they are like, they don't like to pronounce words very well. And so it's really, it takes a while to understand. And there's different accents across the country. And so some are much harder to understand than others. And you're like, what are they saying? Or it can be very distracting. When you're listening to someone talk, they can be saying amazing things, but the way that they're saying the word hits you differently. And you're like, what? Like that doesn't have an R in it. Why does it, why do, are you pronouncing it with an R sound, you know? And so that definitely affects a lot of things. So do I think New Zealanders could be better verbal communicators? Yeah, I would say they do just fine communicating with each other, but I think sometimes they don't realize um, how fast they're talking, you know, and it's okay. Like if people are coming from another country and moving to your country, like you don't need to change to adapt to them right but the only other thing i would say about that is that they could you could also learn from people from other countries that you know have good speaking skills or whatever speak clearly and pronounce all of the letters in the word <laughs> you know you could do that but you don't have to because this is your culture and this is the way you do it and you have to adapt and I like it because I like it when people talk fast. I don't deal well with slow talkers. I start to go like this. I get the eye twitch. <laughs> um, and so, and, but I've definitely like, I, my first meal in New Zealand, sitting down with a bunch of New Zealanders, I had no idea what they're saying. Like, is this even English? Like, <laughs> and it was just like so embarrassing because you're like, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> Because you can always ask like, what did you say? I'm sorry, could you repeat that like so many times? You can only do that so many times. I find that the verbal communication on the phone in New Zealand is not great. I really struggle. Like they, number one, say phone numbers too fast, like when they're leaving a message. Uh, also like, you know, you get on the phone and say, you know, someone's calling about something that you have not, and they say their name real fast and like where they're from, like, who is this? And what is this about? Not really clear. I struggle with that, um, with you know, with some of the accents and stuff. So I think it's helpful for New Zealanders to be aware that not everybody is totally necessarily understanding what you're saying. You don't necessarily need to change, but I think there's always room for improvement, no matter who you are or where you're from, um, and how you speak. So those are some thoughts on whether I think New Zealanders could improve their verbal communication. All right, number two. Let's talk about written communication because. This has been interesting uh, since I've been here. So I'm a professor, I teach communication, I teach marketing, I teach business. I've worked with students, but I've worked with a lot of international students. I've worked with a lot of Kiwi students. So I would say everybody struggles with writing, whether you're from New Zealand, from the US. I mean, I was a professor there too, and that was the number one concern at all the staff meetings. Like, do these people know how to write? So if you are in New Zealand and you feel like you are not a good writer, you're not alone. This is a very common trend across the world, I would say. Maybe not everywhere. I haven't been everywhere and I haven't really actually thought about, you know, other countries that might be better. But I think it's interesting because I would say spelling in New Zealand is mm, not very good. I'm just gonna, it's not very good. But, you know, with the rise of AI, with Grammarly, do you need to? You know, there's just like, is it an absolute necessary skill, you know? I think in general, some um, basic good spelling is good because there's always situations, but yeah. So I think the spelling is interesting, but this is also another thought that I had. So in the school system here, I've noticed that they teach, I mean, before university, they teach very much um, like in elementary school, 
creative writing, like detailed, descriptive writing. Um, and then it continues on a bit in high school, uh, a little bit more straightforward uh, depending on the subject. But I think that that's interesting and I see that kind of coming off in the professional world and with adults as well, like very good at descriptive writing, um, but not necessarily good always at business writing, like that clear, concise, direct, like just get to the point, <laughs> you know? And so I, so it's, it's not bad. I would, it's just as like, I think it's interesting as like, I've, I can see that in my students, like that they're very good at descriptive writing or they'll, I, I mean, I've never been in a place where like the students write too much all the time, you know? And that's just kind of, again, I think that that's kind of how you're taught. And so it makes sense. Um, and I don't know, I don't think that clear, concise, direct business type writing is superior in, um, you know, in, in a lot of situations. And so it's just very interesting. The writing, everybody could be better writers, really no matter where you're from. I guess that's really my point. All right, number three, let's talk about nonverbal communication. So if you don't know what that is, nonverbal communication is all of the things that are not spoken when you're talking. So me using my hands is nonverbal, my eye contact is nonverbal, um, you know, my facial expression, my stance, you know, all of kind of the things that communicate a message. If you don't know, and I'm just gonna give you some communication insight here, that your nonverbal communication speaks way louder than what you're actually saying. So if I, if I'm like, yeah, today I love New Zealand, like it's so great. It's just the most amazing place. You don't believe me, right? Because my nonverbals are contradicting my, what I'm saying. And so you're going to believe my nonverbals. Okay. So there's just your little lesson for the day. Look at that. You've, t you've learned something today. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but nonverbals in New Zealand are interesting. So whenever you go to a new culture, I highly recommend that you learn the nonverbal cues, the nonverbal things that are appropriate. Um, there's a lot of different cultures here uh, that like eye contact is not necessarily a thing. Uh, so like, I'm like, why are you not looking at me? And I'm trying, you know, trying to look at them and they, like, they think it's rude that I'm staring, you know? And so you just need to know that. You need to understand the different nonverbal cues uh, you know, uncomfortable, like a lot of people here are uncomfortable with like the, the, vo the pausing, they call it like a vocalized, I guess that would be more verbal. And so people kind of fill that in. And so that's uncomfortable, like the pausing. Um, yeah. And just, you know, like the nonverbal way that they carry themselves are very relaxed and casual here. And you just see that in the way that they, uh, you know, their nonverbals are reacting. I tend to be very expressive, right? And outgoing, and that's not normal here. <laughs> and that's fine, they love it, you know? Um, I don't get like negative feedback, although they're probably all thinking bad things, I don't know. <laughs> oh well, I am who I am. So, uh, so just be aware, I would just say, when you come to New Zealand of some of the different nonverbal cues that you're gonna get, like even at, I am really sensitive to them now. I notice that when I'm hanging around Americans that are relatively new here because I help people move here from the US and so I meet them a lot in person and I can see like the way that they're acting and how everybody around them is reacting <laughs> and they have no idea <laughs> because their nonverbals are communicating something that they don't realize. And even the expressions of the people around I can see now, which I would never have saw when I first came um, and read and you wouldn't and you wouldn't think much of it. But I, you know, I just from being here, I guess. So if you want some help, um, that's probably actually a really good topic I should put on my training hub. So if you're in the training hub, you're going to get something on nonverbal cues. You know, you can talk to me. I'm happy to help. I am a communications consultant. If you ever need help with anything, um, I love all things communication. All right. Number four, let's talk about feedback. How well do New Zealanders take feedback? I would say that as a general rule of thumb, uh, constructive criticism is avoided. I've talked about this before. Uh, I, don't, I think it's actually one of the big detriments to New Zealand, to be honest, because things don't move ahead when people don't get proper feedback, they can't improve, and then, you know, mediocrity exists and continues. Uh, and so learning how to be good at giving feedback, 
um, constructively, nicely, uh, and being honest with that person actually really helps them. So I think that people think about it a little bit wrong here. They like they they don't want they avoid the conflict. Uh, they don't want to have difficult coverage, and that's not everybody. I've had plenty of people here that are amazing at communicating that. I'm just talking in general, and I've talked about this topic before, and it seems that most of you agree with me, and so I'm not crazy, okay? <laughs> uh, that the feedback isn't given. So people generally, like, if someone's maybe not good in a position, they won't necessarily tell them to kind of move them into a different position or give them some professional development. It's a bit avoided, but my point is, is that does nothing but they think that that's helping that person and it isn't. It's actually not, it's, it's, it's harming them because they're not aware, okay? And then now they've been in the job for 30 years. Now it's a little bit late to be telling them this, you know? And, and they probably don't like what they do, but they don't realize that maybe that's because they're not great at it or this isn't really their skill set. And, you know, it's all these things. So you're not helping them, you're not helping the people around you. And then what happens is, is, when you don't have the right people in positions, you lose some of your best people, right? Because they're like, okay, I can't work with this. You know what I mean? It can be very difficult. And of course I've had very limited experience. That has been my experience for sure that people don't. And even when I've been in meetings and I'm giving a little bit more direct feedback or if someone's giving me direct feedback, the people are uncomfortable with that. This is not a comfortable thing to talk about. So it's avoided. Uh, in general. And so I think that that is a big area of improvement. If people want to learn how to give, and it's hard. I mean, I don't think anybody in the world is like, oh, I love, I love um, HR and giving and firing people and, you know, giving hard feedback. No, but I don't think anybody likes it. But you can actually get better at it with experience and just being like, hey, you know, um, I actually care about you being in a job where you can be the most successful and that you enjoy that uses your skill set. And I just don't think that this is it, you know, and you know, in a very constructive way. But if you need help with that, let me know. I'll, I'll do what I can. And the last area that I want to touch on briefly is the customer service here in New Zealand. So in New Zealand, the way that they would word it is they pay all their employees a living wage is the words that they would use. So there isn't the tipping culture where like, you know, a waitress gets 225 an hour and relies heavily on tips. And so are, are, have gotten really good at customer service because they have to, because they have to eat, right? And so a New Zealander, very common for them to think that's quite unfair that you should pay them a living wage. And I would probably agree with them on that. The other flip side is that I don't see customer service being trained well here. Like when, even if someone's a greeter at a restaurant, they're not overly, uh, I mean, so many times, so many restaurants. I mean, I've traveled the whole country. Some are great, but some are like, you know, not enthusiastic. Um, it's very common in retail and people aren't too excited about their job or they just, they do, oh, I don't know. Or I'm not, I'm not sure that we have that. Like that's an appropriate answer. <laughs> You know, there's plenty of people that do help you and it's good, but it, so many times I go and they're like, we don't know, you know, and they're, they don't care to find out. They don't care to like really help or they're just like, oh, we're out of that or, you know, uh, some other reason. And it's just, there's just not that whole sense of like the serving the customer and kind of whatever it takes and maintaining that relationship and really valuing it. Um, and that's a generalization, of course, of New Zealand, but I think that the communication, I think some training and customer service would, I think that if you own a business, you could really differentiate yourself by having amazing customer service experience, because I think it would be noticeably different. If you own the same restaurant as someone or some, a cafe that someone has just down the street, like I think, and you had amazing service, like I think you would get a lot of people there. I think it would be different, you know? There's plenty of cafes that have servers. A lot of times you just order up at the counter and they bring in and, and they're perfectly nice. Like everybody's perfectly nice, but it's just not, it's not the same. When you live in a culture where customer service, the customer's always right, when da, 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 it's not the same. Um, I don't know. I'd be curious to hear what the rest of you think. If you're from, you know, Asia or South America or Japan or like all different, all different places, like 
uh, England even, you know, Europe, like what is like what do you think about the customer service here in New Zealand? Am I am I am I missing something or uh, you know, I don't I'm okay with it. I am I prefer to just get things myself and not have people keep constantly like, "Okay, would you like a refill? Would you like that?" you know, always interrupting like I would say overall I'm okay with it, but it does get frustrating when it's just clearly that like people aren't they don't have that engagement in their in their job and I think that's just a matter of training on that and learning how to communicate that uh, but yeah I would love to hear your thoughts on that because that's just my experience well I hope you enjoyed the video today it was a little bit of a different one we talk about communication in New Zealand and let me know your thoughts let me know if I was like all way off or you're like totally that's totally been my, I just kind of wanted to open up the conversation around how things are communicated here generally. Cause I could have gone into like a million specifics and maybe I will, if you guys are interested in that and want to talk about that more specifically. If you need help with communication, reach out to me. Uh, you can get my email uh, in the description and I'm happy to help if you are running into a tough conversation that you're not sure how to handle, we can talk it through. I'll see you guys next week.